are just creating this insane blue viral style 3D pillar animation. And it has that clean, modern feel that will make your client leave a testimonial like this after you deliver the video. So let me show you exactly how you can do it as well. So I'm going to start off with creating a new composition and we're going to introduce the pole and a few backgrounds. So first of all, I'm going to create a new solid. Let's make it the composition size. And I'm going to introduce the four color gradient and let's create like a navy blue background with, with a little bit of different areas to make it look quite unique. Something like this will look amazing. Now it's time for the dust sort of texture. Let's introduce it and let's change the blending mode to soft light. Afterwards, I'm going to introduce the first pillar and there are actually going to be three pillars. So I'm going to duplicate it and then we're going to introduce the fill effect. And we're going to change the color to blue, like navy blue again. And I'm going to create an adjustment layer below it. And we're going to introduce blur to the pole that we just duplicated in order to create this sort of really sleek glow effect behind it. Okay, something like this. Now I'm just going to introduce curves. I'm going to adjust the blue curve and we're going to do something like this. Okay, that's going to make it match the composition style better. I'm just going to pre-compose the entire pillar and we're just going to duplicate it three times. One, scale this one down. Okay, and now we have three pillars, each different height. And let's introduce the text. So the letter number one. Now I'm just going to introduce the gradient ramp effect to create this really nice gradient on the number one. Let's make it match the style. So let's keep it blue, but a little bit brighter than the background. And now we're just going to go to layer styles and we're going to add bevel and emboss in order to make it look even smoother. I'm also going to add the light sweep effect to make it even more cinematic. Let's adjust the edge thickness a bit right here. And basically what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to duplicate this and we're going to do number two and number three. And we're going to change that in a sec. We need to change the scale first. And now number two, let's reposition it. And then number three right here. Okay. And so basically we can also adjust the gradient ramp right here because the, the navy blue is a bit too dark. So let's keep it, let's keep it sort of grayish or darkish, something like this. And then we're going to introduce a camera make sure to select these options right here. And we're going to change it to 35 nanometers. And then I'm going to create a new null object that's connected with the camera. And this is going to be the first null object. And then we're going to create this sort of movement right here. Okay. I'm going to disable the texture for a second so that we can see the pillars nicely. And the camera is going to move based on the first pillar at first. So now let's select the second pillar. Let's move it out a bit further away. We're, going to, we're selecting along with the number sort of. And now we're basically making sure that in the 3D composition, number one, two, and three are in a different sort of depth from the camera. So that one is closest and two is further away. Three is further away, like most far away. Okay, that's the word I wanted to use. Okay, now let's create a keyframe for position and let's introduce a slight zoom in effect and let's bring it up. Okay, you can already see the slight 3D effect. And now we're going to enable keyframing for focus distance, aperture and blur level. And let's adjust it so that you can see that line. It's tops on the line of number one. Okay. This is going to basically going to make it stick around that point. And let's adjust the blur level, the aperture, just to make sure it looks good so that the background numbers are blurred out, the background pillars. And we're also going to use the speed graph right here in order to make the keyframes a bit smoother. So something like this is going to look great, super smooth. Okay. And now play this back. I'm going to also adjust the motion tools right here. And we're going to create a, another null. And that null is going to be connected to the first null. It's going to be above it. And we're going to create another keyframe or another position change. And this time we're going to go up and here's where the text is going to be positioned. So we're going to actually going to have to reposition the background in order to make sure that there is enough area up there for the text, which you're going to get it in a sec. Okay. I'm going to create a line that's going to connect to the text box, which we're going to create in a second. That line is going to be animated, but also needs to be correctly repositioned to be directly behind number one. So let's bring it up and let's bring it behind 
Just a quick reminder for you guys, you can receive the After Effects project file we are working on today by subscribing to my newsletter. You'll find the instructions in the pinned comment down below. Number one, so that it looks sleek. And now, okay, let's make it a bit smaller actually. And let's bring it down. Okay, something like this will work great. And now we're gonna create a trim path so that the line nicely sort of trims out so that it grows from behind on number one. And this is gonna be the end point of that trim path. We're also gonna keyframe it so that it looks really smooth. Nice. And now basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go stroke and we're gonna go and we're gonna add a few dashes right here. Okay, so that we have that nice dashed line effect. Let's just make that. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to taper and we're gonna make sure that there's this nice fade out effect on that line. And now it's time for the text box. So let's just create a text box with a rectangle tool and we're gonna introduce a gradient ramp. We're gonna keep it dark gray with a little bit of navy, okay? And that's gonna create like a really nice effect that matches the background. Now I'm gonna introduce inner glow on that rectangle we just created. And we're gonna in in increase the size right here. Let's just bring it up. Something like this will work great. And then one more thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna decrease the opacity. Let's increase the size even more. Something like this. Okay. Then we're gonna go and we're gonna increase the roundness right here. And we're gonna edit the gradient color. So right here, something along the lines of blue, but let's make it a bit brighter. Okay, this kind of gradient is gonna look amazing. We can also adjust the stroke to make it a bit thicker. And we're just making sure that it has that sort of glass paint effect. So let's introduce the stroke right here and then the CC light sweep, okay? That thing is gonna make it like it's an actual glass panel and it looks really amazing. Just take a look at this, okay? And we can, I'm wondering if we should keyframe this. Okay, first of all, let's reposition it so that it matches the camera movement and it's way too close. So once we make it 3D, we need to bring it up and we need to bring it way behind number one, okay? So something like this, let's bring it, let's make it a bit smaller. Let's bring it above the dashed line we introduced. Make it a bit bigger actually. And take a look at this, okay? And now we can keyframe it. So basically at the beginning, there's gonna be zero opacity and it's gonna sort of fade in like so. And afterwards, we're gonna decrease the edge thickness right here, okay? And not to zero, but something around one. And let's adjust the edge intensity to something around 20. Okay, this is gonna make it way more subtle. We don't want like a very sharp line on those edges. Okay, and let's add text. So we're doing, we're doing three pillars of a good personal brand. So the first element of a good personal brand is clarity. So let me add the text right here. We need to adjust it again, position wise, it needs to be where the glass pane is in the same area in terms of camera positioning. Okay, and we can adjust the position to keep it in the top part somewhere of that glass panel, okay? And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna introduce a small position change that's gonna bring the text up, look at this. And then again, we're gonna introduce an opacity change. So that's gonna create like an effect where the text pops up from the bottom and shows up gradually. And then we're gonna add small text beneath the keyword. So, you know, if you have a personal brand, you wanna be clear about who you are. So we're gonna, again, adjust that text clearly in terms of position, just to make sure that 3D is taken care of. So we just need to make sure that it's positioned in front of the panel, but it's not too big. Okay, boom, right here. Let's adjust the positioning right here. Let's move this, let's try to center it pretty much. And we're gonna introduce the word ramp effect. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the range selector to adjust the offset. And this is gonna create this kind of effect. Really nice to sort of slide in effect for each letter. Now it's time to create another null. This is gonna be the third null. And this one is gonna be connected or attached to null number three. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna introduce another keyframe and this time we're gonna move out back, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna move back down. So we're gonna to have to do the same thing with the background. 
So let's just, first let's take care of those keyframes, I think. So let's just make sure that we have that nice, easy ease movement. We can use the Motion Tools Pro plugin for that. And then we're also gonna introduce a position change for the background. Let's just lower its position so that it is aligned with the movement of the camera right here. Make it smooth and let's take a look if, if it looks okay, it looks fine, it looks perfect actually. And now it's time to introduce another null object. So we're gonna use the Motion Tools Pro panel in order to introduce it, you can do that without it as well. And then we're gonna make sure that it's connected to null number three. So same as last time. And now we're gonna adjust the position right here so that we gradually zoom in onto the second pillar right here, okay? Let's just adjust the camera positioning right here. Let's move it out. Let's zoom in so that it's not blurred. It cannot be blurred, okay? So we need to adjust that. And we also wanna adjust those keyframes right here to make them smooth. And we're gonna to need to slightly change the camera movement right here. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the focus distance so that it's not blurred despite being so close, so closely zoomed into number two. And this is gonna change our focus distance slightly and that's gonna make it sharp despite zooming in so close. Okay, now it's time for the fifth null right here. And now this one is gonna be responsible for moving up above the second pillar. Same story right here. We're gonna be doing the third sort of pillar of a powerful personal brand. So we need to zoom, not zoom, but move the camera up. And then we're gonna duplicate that line right here. And we're gonna bring it around number two. So let's bring it a bit lower. Let's make sure that it's behind. Nice. Okay, let's bring it a bit lower actually. Move it out, let's make sure that it looks good. I could see that, but okay, let's just copy, let's just copy this. Let's just copy the entire glass pane along with the text. I'm gonna color code it so that we can clearly see which is responsible for which. And I'm just gonna move it right here in the composition in the 3D preview, right here around where we have the second pillar above it. So basically above the line we just added, and now we need to reposition the glass pane with the text so that it is directly above the arrow that leads to number two. Same story here, we need to scale down the text as well. And the second pillar of a powerful personal brand is consistency. You need to consistently push out content, right? So again, we're gonna introduce the word ramp animation right here, which is gonna create this nice effect. Let's play this back just to preview what we have done up until this point. Okay, moving on, we're gonna basically duplicate, not duplicate, but we're just gonna introduce a new null again. But before we do that, we're gonna introduce a change in the keyframes on the fifth null we already have. Okay, okay, we need to move it a bit further away so that it starts zooming back out, boom. And then we move to pillar number three on that same null, if that makes sense, because it's still on sort of the same level. Okay, let's move it to the left. Let's adjust the keyframe so that they're smooth with Motion Tools Pro. Okay, same goes for the sixth null. We're gonna make sure it moves out to the right and zooms in onto number three. So the keyframe is below on null number five needed to create the infrastructure for the sixth one. Okay, take a look at this. This zooms out and null number six makes sure we zoom in. That's the process right here. And then this is the seventh null. Let's just rename it so that we know which one is which. Right here, let's add a bit of a slight zoom in onto pillar number three, but this one is basically gonna be responsible for moving upwards. Same story right here. So null number seven will help us zoom up. Let's just align it so that it's same story here. It's right around the same level. Okay, let's go back. We're gonna duplicate these three layers, which is the text and the glass pane. But this time I color coded it pink so that we know it's responsible for number three. Okay, and then we're gonna adjust the text visibility. The third pillar of a powerful personal brand show up often so that people remember you, right? So basically, let's just move this out so that it's totally aligned with the panel right here. So that the text is slightly in front of it, but really close to it. 
and then this null null number seven makes sure we move up okay let's go down and let's adjust the camera movement and we're not going to be changing the camera movement but we're going to be changing the focus distance okay we're going to change it because the glass panel is slightly further away but still that's not an issue we just adjusted the focal length distance let's just smoothen out those keyframes and now it's time for the eighth null that's connected to null number seven and we're just going to move out to the left okay take a look at this and we're going to zoom out so that we have, can take a broad look at all of those right here we're going to get back to this later but take a look at this we zoom out and we can see one two and three all the three pillars so it's like a summary of what the animation was presenting so i'm going to duplicate the line from last time let's just make sure let's keep it consistent let's add the line again behind number three it's going to move then we have the glass pane and take a look at this boom clarity then we have visibility right no consistency sorry and then we have movement towards number three nice shine effect visibility okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to go to effect controls and we're going to introduce a bit of changes on the text colors so basically we're going to keyframe the gradient ramp effect on number two for example right here we're going to create keyframes and it's going to sort of gradually change color depending on when we zoom in onto the particular layer with text so the number so take a look at this number one at first and then we activate number two as we zoom in onto it and then the gradient ramp will also introduce on number three right here okay now what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the focus distance once again to make sure that the blur is not so prominent all the time so that it, it it's for some time there's not so much blur when we're zooming into number two and then we're also going to introduce gradient ramps on the text that we added above that the text that the that we have um on, on those glass panes so we're going to try to keep it consistent bright blue with a bit of darker blue something like this number two consistency and then let's zoom in onto number three nice shine effect visibility show up show up often so people remember you let me play this back and now we zoom out to view to preview the entire composition okay so i'm also going to play around with the gradient ramp right here and we're going to add a two comp variable and we're going to change it to value okay and introduce the curve right here and we're just going to copy the expression we're going to introduce motion blur on every object okay we're going to introduce a vignette right here and we're going to center it at this point make sure that the motion blur is set up on every layer and this is going to enable vignette on everything i'm just going to pre-compose everything again and i'm going to introduce a vignette on top of that as well so we basically added a double vignette on every layer and on top of that we added a vignette again and then my sort of spice effect i always use is the gaussian blur but we only keep it in the corners to keep it sort of cinematic so the gaussian blur we're going to invert that mask we're going to introduce some feathers, some solid feathers, so that you can just not notice the line. And we're going to introduce another adjustment layer now. Okay. And the Venetian blinds effect is going to introduce a bit of that CRT monitor effect or an LED like pixelated. After that, we're going to introduce chromatic aberration on another adjustment layer, which is going to basically introduce this sort of RGB effect you see on a monitor with, R with the RGB. Sometimes the red is slightly off or the blue. Next, we're going to introduce the bulge effect. Okay, this is again going to sort of suggest this is like a fisheye sort of effect. So that in the preview, the center of the screen is slightly rotated and it has that kind of bulge. Okay, and now if I play this back, take a look at this. Boom. Consistency. And then three. Visibility. We added glow on everything. That's it, guys. Make sure to check out this video if you find it potentially interesting or valuable. And I hope to see you in the next one.